Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. We know of the mystery that befell the Native American and Polynesian uh, cultures after the European imperialization and conquest. Most of their cultural practices and traditions, if not all, have been lost in this cultural contact. And one of the greatest challenges that these cultures face today is reinventing themselves and becoming the part of modern life. The traditional Native American and Polynesian cultures had a straightforward and very spiritually aligned view of sexuality. The concept of two spirits and many other diverse expressions of gender and sexuality are just examples of that. The term two spirits was coined in 1990 in Winnipeg, Canada as a means of unifying various gender identities and expressions of Native American, First Nations or indigenous individuals. The term is not a specific definition of gender, sexual orientation or other self-determining catch-all phrase but rather an umbrella term. A two-spirit person uh, is believed to have both the male and female spirits uh, coexisting inside them and they are said to be blessed by the, their creator to see life through the eyes of both genders. We know that pre-colonial America had a diverse cultural landscape probably rooted in just one philosophy of life. For the same reason most of those cultures, most of those tribes recognized divergent gender expressions. You know, they recognized that the feminine and masculine can be uh, in equal proportion in some people which they called as the male and female spirits and in all those tribes uh, the two spirit people or the people who embodied both the male and female spirits were considered divine were considered arbitrators in conflicts and uh, is believed to bless auspicious occasions they also functioned as healers and like i said before because of uh, colonization and modernization of these cultures they have to reinvent and unite under the banner of two spirits people uh, to express their divergent gender roles. Native America and Polynesia have similar ancestral roots. By the way, if you are also a geographic dummy like me, and if you don't know the difference between Polynesia and Native America, Please let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a video on that because when I was making this video, I familiarized myself with the differences and the similarities. So I can tell you what it is if you want. Let me know in the comment section. So just like in Native American cultures, the Polynesian cultures also have a concept of diverse gender expressions. They were called Mahu if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And they were also considered divine and healers and had a very special uh, status and role. There is actually an interesting film uh, documenting the uh, life and, and the struggles of a Mahu person. Uh, if you're interested, you can check it out. Uh, we know that there was a third gender expression or a third gender identity given to some people. Uh, in the Native American and the Polynesian cultures. But does that really mean that the, these cultures or the people in these cultures believed that gender was fluid? Here, I will have to bother you with a bit of spirituality. Most spiritual traditions across the world recognize the binary, the masculine and the feminine. The masculine mostly represented by bulls or tigers or goats, lions, etc. They signify strength, courage, brute force and feminine most often signified by cows, nature or goddesses signify empathy, nurturance, care, affection, love and so on. And virility, fertility and family are all very closely interlinked. 
these two forces have to come together or these two forces have to work together in order to have a fertile and fertility is also seen synonymous to prosperity and being fertile is a really amazing thing in uh, ancient cultures but in modern cultures we really look down upon fertility unless of course you really want a child so we have this binary and then there is this radical thought a radical imagination what if we combine masculine and feminine and then there is creation there is creativity there is godliness and therefore the combined form of the masculine and and feminine is the most divine thing in most traditional cultures this uh, includes native american cultures this includes indian civilization and these people are really considered divine and spiritually significant and also as healers then have you seen lgbtq people being considered divine can lgbtq people summon gods now that brings us to the very important uh, problem of cultural appropriation just for the sake of adding some kind of justification to your ideology these are really different things they have really different interpretations and meanings and just because you want to uh, kind of tell people one narrative you just cult you're just appropriating an entire culture and a cultural event that's not cool today a predominantly uh, western ideology is trying to portray the two spirits people and the uh, diverse gender expressions in native american cultures as an example of gender fluidity and uh, a justification of gender identity theory but it was also a very western abrahamic religious tradition that destroyed these concepts in the first place it was an abrahamic ideology that called these people promiscuous and evil and all kinds of bad words and persecuted them because of these cultural practices as soon as the exploration started the cultural contact proved disastrous for the native american and the polynesian cultures as far as the historical sources go the colonizers never even considered uh, the native american people to be real people or deserving any kind of rights as humans and uh, the christian missionaries or the predominantly christian ideology uh, mainly so these people and their practices as uh, against the nature and against the will of god and against everything that they stood for so there was an active effort to destroy homes their cultures and uh, to convert them into the way or the path of god which was christianity so large scale con conversions happened and most of the surviving native americans are christians with some roots to their uh, cultural traditions so the people in the surviving communities are themselves against diverse gender expressions and against homosexuality and other kinds of gender norms so these people are actually trying to accommodate both the western christian values and the uh, pre-colonial uh, cultural concepts i have to give you a disclaimer that i am talking about a distant civilization culture which i may not know everything about so if i've gotten something wrong please let me know in the comment section and what do you think of the left and the gender identity movement trying to appropriate concepts from uh, ancient civilizations to prove a point and if you found this video interesting please share it with others and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this i've published my first book a novel named Life in a Sip Look Back. It's the story of four kids living in a city with their unique life experiences. They are connected by the chaos in their lives, which are fueled by drugs, abuse, and isolation. 
I don't want to give it all away right here. You can check it out on Amazon or Flipkart. It's also available for direct buying. All these links are given in the description. If you are interested, please go and check it out and grab your copy right now. Thank you.